Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 149. Things to say instead of IDK. Before I start this episode, I've decided to add a positive comments area to the podcast. With all the negativity that's out there, it's nice to hear nice things and you know, I'm no different. Plus, it's a way for me to acknowledge and share what great things you all are out there doing to help build math minds. When I get emails and comments on the YouTube channel that are thank yous, it always brightens my day. If anything I've done has helped you and your students out with building math minds, please email us and let us know. It's info at buildmathminds.com. This week's positivity comes from Kelly. She wrote in saying, I can't thank you enough for all the work you put into making us all better at helping our kiddos. I share so much of what you have out there with all of our teachers. My PD in two weeks will be loaded with ideas from your 10 day kickstart. No matter how much I listen and watch videos about math development, I am always learning and I thank you for that. Well, Kelly, thank you for everything you're doing out there. And I'm so glad that you found the kickstart helpful. That 10 day number sense kickstart is now inside the Build Math Minds PD site for all of you who are members to access. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Okay, in this week's episode, we are helping students know what to say when they don't know what to say or what to do. I'm a big proponent of helping students discover mathematics. I don't believe the best way to teach is to lay out all the steps of an algorithm and have kids practice 30 problems doing those same steps over and over again. I mean, practice is important, don't get me wrong, but it's not the best way to learn and build students' understandings. I've also seen educators who do the exact opposite. They give students a math problem and let them loose to solve it without any guidance. And then when a student does ask for help because they aren't sure what to do, the response from the teacher is, go figure it out. The two ends of the spectrum seem to be, here's the exact ways to solve this problem, follow it exactly. And over here we've got, you go figure it out. I'm not telling you anything. Neither of these tend to work. Instead, it's about finding a balance between these. We need to give some guidance, but not too much. We want them to figure out ways to solve problems on their own that make sense to them, but we can't let them flounder. The book, Seven Steps to a Language-Rich Interactive Classroom by John Seidlis and Bill Perryman gives educators, as the title says, seven steps. And the first one is teach students what to say when they don't know what to say. I was struck by a part of the book when they were discussing step one because I saw how it relates to those educators who are trying to find the balance between giving all the steps to solve math problems or giving none of the steps and telling kids to just figure it out. When reading this section, I believe their first step is a big one to help you get your students to work on problems without your step-by-step direction. And that is all about teaching them what to say when they don't know what to say. (laughs) On page 13, they write, rather than simply accept the non-answer of I don't know, we can instill in our students a sense of accountability and teach them how to help themselves. By encouraging students and providing support for them to simply attempt a response or action, we enable them to overcome learned helplessness and really become independent learners. However, it is not enough to just tell students to think for themselves and try harder. We need to guide our students through the language and habits of independent learners so they too can become independent learners. Teaching students how to acquire helpful information when they are confused and teaching them to think about the steps involved in reaching a specific goal gives them skills they can use inside and outside of school. We are all looking for ways to banish, I don't know, and and what from our classrooms. 
One simple solution is to teach students how to respond when they are unsure about an answer for a question without using I don't know. There are a number of specific alternatives that can help students get past the I don't know stage. Providing these alternatives, teaching students how to use them, and holding them accountable for using them creates an expectation for accountable conversations. So instead of just telling students to go figure it out when they don't know what to do, we need to actually help and model our alternatives to I don't know, or as the kids say, IDK. If your students have that learned helplessness where they are waiting for you to just tell them what to do and how to solve problems, you need to spend time actually teaching them what to do when they don't know because they've never really been in that situation before. Or if they have, they know that if they wait long enough, the teacher will eventually give in and tell them what to do. They go on to encourage educators to do this from the very beginning of the school year, but I want to tell you, it's never too late to start this expectation. They show an anchor chart inside the book with examples. However, the examples are like more generic and some wouldn't really apply to when your students are solving math problems. But on page 15, they did give a couple of sentence stems that would be good to use during math time, saying things like, I started working out the problem by blank, but was unsure what to do next. Or I know blank, but I'm trying to find out blank. Those are a couple you could use, but I'd like to encourage you to work with your students to figure out what things they could say or ask for that could help them when they want to just say, I don't know. If you are a member of the Build Math Minds PD site, Rosalba made a math shorts video about the keys to effective anchor charts. So make sure you go watch that before you make an anchor chart with your students. For those of you who aren't members, well, first off, you can join by coming over to buildmathminds.com slash BMM. But the biggest key to effective anchor charts is to make them with your students, not for your students. Do it as a group. And my advice for this specific chart would be to give your students a math task or a problem, one that you would want them to kind of go off and work on their own. But instead of actually working on the problem, Talk together as a group about what your students are asking themselves about this problem. What are they saying to themselves when they start thinking about the problem and their approach to the problem? And would some of those things be good things to put up on this anchor chart? Then ask the group if anyone has good questions that they ask teachers when they don't know. Give the time and space for your students to share their own ways that they think through problems and the ways that they ask for help. Let them learn from each other as you work together to create an anchor chart that gives them, here's your title for your anchor chart, things to say instead of IDK. All right. Now, if you are watching this or listening to it on the YouTube channel, um, I want you to comment down below what kind of things your students come up with. If you're listening over on the podcast, come on over to youtube.com slash buildmathminds. And again, post in those comments. Let's share together the things that your students are coming up with so that you've got some ideas to kind of get the ball going with your own students, okay? So share what things you start putting up on the things to say instead of IDK anchor chart, all right? We can all learn from each other. So until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep building math minds.